Welcome to Perf Festival TV, celebrating, of course, Black Nights happening, wonderful films having their world premieres. And one of these wonderful films is Pelican from Croatia, being shown in the first feature competition. And there's a lot to talk about. Please welcome Filip Perakovic with me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It is um, a true pleasure to talk about Pelican because it gives me the... Uh, I, I can I can test something. This is about a goalie going into a sanatorium, a uh, uh, goalkeeper from, from soccer, from football. And I think you are not interested in football at all. <laughs> I'm not a football fan. <laughs> You're not a football <laughs> fan. A there football. you go. <laughs> that, this is about something else. This is about physique. This is about presence. This is about fame. So why did you choose that character of Josip going to the yeah. sanatorium? Well, uh, it obviously worked for us to have a character that's a sport person because right. he's at a spa recovering from an, from an injury and uh, it's nice to have something that's very physical like that, right. you know? Uh, but also, of course, football is very important in Croatia's culture. Yeah. So there's a layer <laughs> sure. of meaning over there as well. Right. Uh, but this is, more than anything, a film about uh, identity crisis of one person and it's very universal in that theme. So uh, when we set out to write, a, me and my co-writer, when mm -hmm. we set out to write a film about an identity crisis, it seemed that like the goalkeeper is a very good occupation for someone going through that kind of a problem. Because when you think about it, the position of a goalkeeper in football is very weird. I mean, uh, he's always lonely, although it's a team sport, <laughs> yeah. you know? True. Uh, it's called football. He can play with his hands. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has a jersey of a different color than the rest right. of his team. So when you're talking about identity crisis, I think that uh, goalkeepers have a lot to say. And and the 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 best thing for a goalkeeper is when nothing has happened, basically. Exactly. <laughs> nothing when has he, happened. When he's busy, he, <laughs> exactly. he got problems. That's a problem. Yeah. So I think that uh, goalkeepers playing in good teams when they don't have a lot to do, right. they're thinking constantly. So. Exactly. They are very much contemplative, I think. Sure. Um, now, identity crisis in that sense that he's also a very public person. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to talk about the actor because normally on film, it's great to have actors that n have not the height of one <laughs> meters yeah. 80 or more. <laughs> But this is this is he has a massive presence, and you chose him. So so, how was the casting process there? Well, uh, I knew our main actor Eddie from mm -hmm. uh, theater, but I didn't know him personally, right. and he never acted on film before. Okay. Uh, but he had something interesting in him. Of course, mm -hmm. he has that energy that uh, I think we were searching for. Mm -hmm. uh, it also helped that he's almost two meters tall so he's very he convincing is, as he? a yeah, goalkeeper yeah, okay. yeah. and you said a very interesting thing about the physical presence i think that was very important yeah. for our film he's almost in every shot of the film and it really helps when uh, he has that really strong physical presence and of course uh, the the film is about a sport person and he he needs to look strong although he's maybe very fragile inside so right. there's also that very interesting uh, correlation between those two things there is um how how do you like cinema i think you like cinema as a laboratory of human positions human humans trying to define themselves and failing and probably also succeeding but that very fine line of you know yeah. uh, trying to observe yeah I, i think you said correctly i the thing that's m most interesting in cinema to me is uh, the inner things, that, uh, our inner worlds that we carry with ourselves. So what is important for you to, in order to create that? Uh, it's, of course, camera position, mise-en-scene, mm -hmm. but letting the camera roll for a long time as well, isn't it? Well, it is. Uh, we decided to uh, do this film uh, with, with, without cuts inside the scenes. Right. So it's uh, only one shot per scene, mm. uh, which I think works really well for this story because it doesn't let you to take take uh, your gaze away from the main character. Mm -hmm. You're always with him and it, it is a bit like a laboratory, as, mm -hmm. as you said. Uh, of course, it was also a very practical decision because we didn't have a lot of time or money, so <laughs> it worked like that as well. But yeah. uh, the most important thing is, it, thing is it works for the story. And I also, it's just a matter of aesthetic preference as well. And talking about aesthetic preferences, before the interview on camera, we talked about that it's a very good year for Croatian filmmaking and young filmmaking, yeah. uh, per se. Um, how 
do you see yourself in the bigger scene of Croatian filmmaking right now? Is this an aesthetic uh, preference that has formed within you, but is discussed with a lot of other young artists as well mm -hmm. at Zagreb Academy? How is uh, uh, Croatian filmmaking evolving in your eyes? Uh, well, it's really hard to comment your place yeah, okay. like that, of course. <laughs> right. yeah, sure. uh, but uh, there's definitely something happening in the Croatian film, I would say, mm. because uh, we had a lot of uh, films this year and last year uh, made by uh, first-time filmmakers who reached international premieres and uh, A-list festivals and so on. Uh, so there's definitely something good happening. Uh, and uh, but the interesting thing is, I think that uh, all of, all of those films are different in their themes, in the, their aesthetic approaches. Okay. So, at least I don't think that th there is a aesthetic wave that's happening. But right, it, right, right. There is definitely some energy happening. Okay. Yeah. That's wonderful to hear. Um, it, we didn't talk about humor, but <laughs> humor yeah. is an essential part of the film, of course. Yeah, yeah. A very dry humor. How would you describe what's the importance of that? Again, social satire to highlight human failings and shortcomings. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, I write. I wrote the film with uh, my co-writer Nicolina, and uh, mm. uh, we shared the same sense of humor, and it somehow happened very organically and naturally in our yeah. process. Like we were coming up with ideas, going back and forth with them, and uh, <laughs> suddenly. Uh, we had a lot of ideas that made us laugh and it was I think that's very good when you're dealing with the team that we are doing because right. it is a bit absurd yeah yeah know? yeah, so, yeah that's, that's yeah. there how do you empathize with Josip your main character because it is he you might call him broken <laughs> with his wings broken in a sense uh But it's the surroundings of his, including his girlfriend being an Instagram star, that have this unbroken, unreflected approach to life throughout, no? even his ex-colleagues and former colleagues. So, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, the whole film is centered around his impressions of the surroundings. Yeah. So uh, uh, his girlfriend or his friend that comes to visit him, they're all like reflections of the life that he's trying to leave behind him. And uh, I think that there's a lot to empathize with that, you know, mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, It's something that I think happens a lot in our lives when we are trying to move to a different direction. Uh, that's an interesting point there. I mean, uh, she being an influencer and concentrated mm -hmm. okay. on the on the on the on the cell phone, and he's trying to kind of move on. He's slowly yeah. becoming more conscious, no, of yeah, what yeah. what what life he what life he led. How do you feel uh, about our nowadays? I would call it Instagram culture in a certain way. <laughs> um, Are we able as human beings, are we in this zoo and ever going deeper into that? Or are we more in Josip's shoes in terms of getting weaker, thereby understanding, oh God, I have to do something else, something different, and I have to step out of. How, yeah. how do you feel? <laughs> where's, <laughs> where's it going? I feel that we are definitely going deeper into the jungle. You know? We are. But uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a world that's really foreign to me. I mean, right. I don't have social networks. I mean, maybe this will be on social networks. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's not a conscious decision. It's just yeah, something yeah. that that happened in a way. But uh, so yeah, it's something that's far away from me. But right. uh, I feel that it's very important to our culture, and I think yeah, we are definitely going more and more into that direction. I'm thinking about special scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the sanatorium, he's a lot in his hotel room, and it's about the sounds the bed makes and the, mm -hmm. the, that you feel so and and the humor is coming out of that a lot uh, and also for example we see him in a stairway moving around a pot <laughs> also a very funny scene but um as a young director and a first time director how did you uh, when did you hone your skills in that sense because y yes uh, humor can be on paper mm -hmm. but how to transport it onto screen you said you didn't cut Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of times that you were running through the scenes or only few takes that you had, for example, you know? How, how did you develop that and how is it connected to your short films and mm -hmm. what you did there, for example? Uh, well, uh, Pelican is very different uh, from the short films that mm -hmm. I made mm -hmm. during my right. studies. Uh, actually, it's my first professional film at all. I mean, mm -hmm. I've never done a professional short film before that. I've done a couple of shorts during uh, my studies because that's what you're required to do right. to, in order to finish them. Uh, 
uh, but uh, it's uh, it's not something that uh, connected to the things that I did before because they are films that I did like when I was very young director so <laughs> yeah. they're not very connected to this okay. one uh, but uh, the good thing when you don't cut is but you can also rely a lot on actors mm -hmm. you, you can have a much uh, clearer dialogue with them and they have a lot more freedom to do st some of the things that are funny in the end because they have sometimes maybe a better sense of rhythm that you can have as a director right and you're not forcing them on anything they feel while they, they're playing the scene and uh, I think that's very nice because something always funny comes out that's a very humble approach it's far more it's props it's space and that's all you as a director but people will see that and people will see it here when Pelican is playing now at Perth and we are very happy to have you here with the world premiere of Pelican so thank you, thank Philip, you for much. being here Thank Thanks. you very much. Go to the cinema, everyone, here at PEF. Thank you.